Hey, what's up everybody? Just hanging out here. And I'm just moistening a little of uh, the substrate here on my red foot enclosure. This is one of those Zoomed tortoise houses and I use it as a nursery. It's a lot of fun. Today I'm gonna teach you a little bit about some really cool tortoises. There's some of the most popular pet tortoises out there. And this, of course, the red foot tortoise. Uh, these are a fantastic tortoise and I'm gonna teach you how to go from baby to adult. So stick around and I'll see you right after the open. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tender. So one of the most popular pet tortoises and the ones that I get emails about all the time to make a video for is the Redfoot tortoise. So the first thing I want you guys to notice is I love keeping tortoises outdoors. You guys know that. But if you're going to keep baby tortoises outdoors of any species, you got to protect them against predators. And right now these guys are, I'm using the Zoomed tortoise house as a nursery because it works out really, really well. I painted these uh, um, with some stain to kind of keep the wood from rotting since I like to put it outdoors. So I would recommend doing that. But it's fantastic because it's got a lid that you can lock and nothing can get in it because obviously it's got this wire on here. It's also got a lid here for the inside and the, the red foots are actually cohabitating with uh, some baby elongated and baby cherry head tortoises. But we're going to focus on red foots today and I'm going to pull some out. And I get these really beautiful little light babies, but redfoots can be darker. Uh, they're really, really unique species. I love them. They're originally from South America, and some islands like St. Lucia have populations of redfoots. Uh, but those were introduced by man. Uh, these animals natively are from South America, and they are just a medium-sized tortoise. They don't get too big. But they can get close to 30 pounds, some of the larger specimens, and that's different localities and stuff like that. But here are some babies right here. And look at how light my babies are. They're just like a real light, almost uh, a hypo type animal, but not really. Now the first thing to notice is the head is gonna be red. But as this animal grows, this head is gonna turn yellow. Uh, the one thing that won't turn yellow all the way are going to be these nice little red feet. And that's why they get their name, the red foot tortoise. So their common name is named after their legs, their front legs. But they're a real colorful, friendly tortoise, as you'll see when we get over to the adults. They really love uh, when I get in there. They're interactive, too. They know you. Uh, they're cute. They do well in captivity. And definitely down here in the southeastern United States and Florida, they love that humidity. They can take the rain showers. And uh, they do very well, and they thrive out here. Um, with baby tortoises, protection, as I mentioned, is the key. But if you also look down here, you know, we have a little shallow water dish that they can get access to water. I like to soak these guys twice a week to make sure that they're actually being properly hydrated. And then probably the easiest thing for me uh, is this. I'm going to walk over here to these leaves right over here. Check this out. Uh, this is a hibiscus bush. I have a bunch of them growing all over. I'll just pluck some leaves off of it, right? I just, you know, make no, just pluck a few off for the sake of ease here. And we don't have any flowers on this particular plant yet. But then I'll just kind of throw it down here and the tortoises will see these and they'll start to eat them. And that's always a good thing. So basically I'm growing my own food. That's just one of the things I like to do, as you guys know. But these tortoises will eat hibiscus, mulberry leaves, different weeds that grow on your lawn as long as your lawn isn't chemically treated. These guys are also going to eat some store-bought um, produce. Uh, such as collard green, escarole, romaine lettuce, yellow squash shredded up, carrots shredded up, uh, a little bit of fruit, melon, watermelon, uh, cantaloupe, some strawberries, a treat. Uh, but mostly you want to kind of keep it 70% the greens and grasses. Uh, you can also use Missouri tortoise diet. I like the Rapashi forest tortoise grazer or for forest tortoise diet and forest tortoise diet from ZooMed. So any of those prepared diets are good. And the reason we say forest tortoise is because these guys are pretty adaptable. You'll find redfoot tortoises inside forests. 
Uh, but you'll also find them in grasslands. So they're, they're an animal that live kind of on the fringes, uh, which I think is pretty unique and pretty cool. It makes them a very good pet because they can eat a wide variety of foods. UVB light is going to be very important. As you guys see, I put them outdoors. But if you're living up north and you want to raise one of these awesome tortoises up, you're going to have to make sure that you have a full spectrum UVB light uh, that is emitting that light so that they can synthesize vitamin D. Uh, the other thing is they're going to need a heat lamp if you're living in indoors uh, so I like the full spectrum light but it doesn't really provide much heat so I like to get the basking area at around 95 to 100 degrees so you'll have to adjust the wattage to get that temperature by raising or lowering uh, the lamp or by using a more powerful wattage lamp to provide you with the proper basking temperatures so that these animals can thermoregulate and they can digest their food but I love watching them they're curious animals another thing that you can do with most baby tortoises and certainly with redfoots is they become very active after rain and you saw me at the beginning of the video I was sprinkling water on them. You can mist them down. This perks them up because they're more comfortable after a heavy rain. It triggers them to come out of the ground if they're laying in there after they've hatched. It also triggers them to move about and forage for food because the temperatures have cooled off to a nice easy operating temperature for these tortoises to move around at and do a little foraging. Um, also, young tortoises are going to be a little bit secretive because they don't want to get eaten. But if you're providing them with a safe spot, they're going to definitely react to you. So here are the babies. I think it's time that we close this up, maybe take a walk just on the other side of my enclosure. But before I do, I'm going to grab some tortoise diet so we can get these tortoises out so I can talk to you guys. So I'll go do that. Why don't you head on over and see if any of the adults are out there right now. Hey everybody, I see you guys have made it here and it uh, looks like some of my little pals are already out and about so let's go in and you're gonna really see a treat. Now some of you may have seen this on the Instagram profile how I feed them. This is just the Missouri tortoise diet and I just want to get these guys out here but these are adult redfoot tortoises and they are a lot of fun. Uh, very active tortoises you can see they start to swarm me because they know I'm the guy that brings food and that's always fun when you have a pet tortoise because this is uh, an animal that definitely notices you, remembers you, and will come to you, which is kind of fun. But you can see how big they get. So these are medium-sized tortoises. We have some males in here that are quite large, and it's just like other tortoises, you want to see the concavity and the plastron. You want to see a larger tail. And sometimes you'll have what's known as a wasping or a narrowing of the margin, the middle of the shell for a male. For example, this right here. If you look down at the two of these, this is a male. You see how he's kind of narrower at the base? That happens in redfoot tortoises. He's got the concavity right here, and he's got that long tail. Now I'm gonna pick up a female right now. And she's got a little bit of an irregular shell, but you can see it's wide, okay? I'm gonna flip her around now. She's flat, she's got a small tail. So that's a pretty good indicator as to the sex of so the females in my hands right now. There's a male right here. But these tortoises, as I mentioned, they're uh, very adaptable and you can see kind of the enclosure that I built. You can build a simple enclosure, guys. You want to have shade. You want to have a hiding area. This also doubles as a, a winter retreat when it gets too cold. There's a heater in there. Um, but basically, you want an area where there's some leaf litter. Uh, they've denuded it. There's no grass on the ground, but I throw this, the tortoise diet out when I feed them. And that basically enables them to kind of forage around and look for food like they would normally. Here comes a big male coming out of here. This is about as big as you're going to get as far as a redfoot tortoise is concerned. This guy's a character, man. He was someone's pet and I wound up getting them because they can no longer care for him. And I just love this tortoise. He's really, really cool. Watch this, there you go, he eats right out of your hand. But you can see he's quite, quite large. He's about 20 pounds, um, but again, not so big that you can't you know, easily care for these animals if you needed to pull them inside, if you lived someplace where it gets cold, you can do that. Uh, they also, if you get down real low here, you can see how beautiful their eyes are. Uh, this one's framed by some, his, uh, I guess it's the, the ring around his eye. It's a little yellow there, it's really neat, I love that. Oh, let's help him out. Oh my goodness, I'm not doing too good. Come on, buddy. And there you go. A little bit of a nip, but no big deal. 
Uh, so these guys, like I said, are vegetarians. So remember, when you feed them, you're going to want to keep that diet varied. They'll eat some of the cactus pads I have, different leaves like banana leaves. As I mentioned, they're very into the... Um, they're into the Missouri tortoise diet, which we're doing for the sake of ease. Once you're back there, you're almost stepping on one. They'll move around. <laughs> There's tortoises everywhere, and they're going to keep piling out. So this is what's so fun about redfoot tortoises is that, you know, in here there's about 19 of these, and they know when it's time to eat. I throw the food up. They got good, good sense of smell, as most tortoises do. Uh, their sense of smell is highly developed, and they smell and hear me, and so they know that it's time to get some food. So they'll pour on at it here. And I also have these rubber slats hanging down, and that's what we call a passive barrier. And that keeps the warm, uh, warm air in, but I can still keep the door open, and when they want to come out, they just walk right out. Now, we're getting into our summertime, so I don't have to worry so much about keeping them warm. I'll shut the heaters off, and then that acts as a place that they can get out of the heat. So they're really fantastic. Love these tortoises. Um, can't say enough good things about them. They're just truly one of the, my favorite species. Because you know what, guys? I say this all the time. You want an animal that you can do well with. You want an animal that can live outdoors. If you live in the southeastern United States, you know we have a lot of humidity. You know it stays warm in the summer, and we have mild winters. This is the tortoise for you. I just love them so much. Lots of ease. And as long as you keep their husbandry up, meaning you're feeding them the right foods, that they are actually kept in clean environments, uh, they don't really get sick, which is nice. They're a hardy tortoise. Now, another thing I want to mention, and I mention this all the time, folks, is sometimes you get a lot of imported redfoot tortoises, and they're being imported from farms. Here's the deal. I would prefer to see you get from a breeder that's already in the United States. We breed a heck of a lot of these little guys in the United States. Let's leave the ones in the wild wild. Even if they're being farmed, I think they should stay in their country. So there you have it, folks. The Redfoot Tortoise. I hope it's filled it in for you. I know I'm getting filled in right now. This is a slow, methodical tortoise stampede. And uh, it's kind of fun. So uh, if you want to know more about the Redfoot Tortoise, please check out all of our Instagram and Facebook videos. Don't forget to subscribe, it's very important. And uh, you know what? Take a look at our Patreon page. If you want to be more involved, you can be. You can actually become a producer here at Camp Cannon Channel. So thanks so much for all your support. I gotta find a way out of this tortoise quagmire, and this one's kind of eating my, he's kind of eating my shorts, uh, pants rather. I better get out of here. See you guys.